Today I'm gonna to show you how to change the primary spring in your clutch while it's on the snowmobile. Changing the primary spring. So to change the primary spring on a pole layer S, you do not have to take the center bolt out or the clutch bolt they call it. It's a little bit of a time consuming thing compared to the weights. So what I like to do is take every third, every second bolt out. If your spring breaks on the mountain, you're gonna lose a ton of RPM. So instead of your sled revving at 8,000 or 8,200 where it's supposed to be, it's probably only gonna be pulling about 7, 6,500. If it's a big drastic drop in RPM, yeah, your spring is likely broke. It's way harder to do it on these older sleds because the belly pan is in the way. On the newer sleds, it's way easier because the clutch opens right up and you can get at it. And I go around the clock probably about six or seven times until they all come out. If you loosen one more than the other too much, the bolts will get tight in there and they will break. If you haven't noticed, I have a few springs kicking around the old digit nine layer here. Like I have way too many springs. A lot of guys don't change the spring on the snowmobile ever. A lot of times uh, a spring will wear out. So what does that do? Well, your initial is gonna be softer. Your finish is gonna be softer. What does that mean? That means if you have a 130, 340 spring in your sled it is now gonna be a 120, 320. So you're going to have, it's going to engage sooner and it's not going to have the, tight, the high RPM or the top RPM that you're looking for in your sled. So you want to put a new spring in it or change it to something different. So now that I got them just about all the way out, I'm going to start taking them out. By the time the spring's almost out, it doesn't have a whole lot of tension on it anymore because they're short. Unless you're running an aftermarket spring, they're usually a little longer. It's a little bit of a process, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not super easy, especially on these sleds. So you take the cover off. When you take these covers off, and this is an aftermarket one, but the stock ones have a little X on the inside. Make sure that lines up with the X on your spider of your clutch. Those have to line up to keep it balanced. So once you get the clutch cover off. These old sleds are kind of great because you can fish this spring right out of the hole. Just like that. Then you take the new one and put a new one in. Same way. Fish it in through the hole. On the side, on the new sleds, you don't have to do that because they don't have a belly pan. Take your clutch cover, find your X. Mine's right there on this cover. So those X's have to line up with the X on the helix, or on the spider, sorry. And you can start putting it back together. So this is where a friend would come in handy. So if my brother can do two things at once and not run a camera and do this at the same time, There we go. So he can get that one started at least. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, watch your fingers. Okay, that's good. That's good. I'm gonna go around to the other side. Pinch this in, get a bolt in there. Once you get one started, it's not so bad. So at this point, you can just keep putting all the bolts in. Again, when you're tightening these bolts up, go all the way around because you don't want to tighten one side more than the other. A, you're going to wreck the uh, fiber bushing on the clutch plate. B, you might break a bolt. Then you're really hooped because it's going to be out of balance. You might get off the mountain. You might not. There. There you have it. Changing the spring. 
when you get into the mod sled thing or you want to improve something on your sled, let's say you want more power. So you give your sled more power, you have to change the clutching. A lot of times that involves a bunch of stuff. I don't know if you heard it before, but the phrase clutching is a black art is true. Everybody has a little different theory on how to set it up and there's many different combinations. So you start with springs, clutch weights, and gearing in the chain case. That all affects how the sled's gonna work. That's why I have so many of everything because I like to throw a few concoctions together and see how it works. Some work better than others, some don't. It's all in the combination and you're gonna hear that a lot at Digit 9. With a little bit of practice, do it in your shop, try it once. I mean, you can do some tuning. Aftermarket springs are everywhere. You can get them at all kinds of places. Give it a try. If you thought this video was helpful, help us out a little bit, subscribe. Get onto that button down there, guys. Please subscribe and make sure you click on the bell notification so you get all of our latest and greatest videos.